Okay. Welcome back. To my let's play of Final Fantasy 14 on the PC. It is time to continue on now with the main story on our road to Heavensward. Heavens Heavensward. You'd think it would be Heavensward. I don't know exactly. I'll have to look up like a video where they announce it. Anyways, uh, let's get into it. We got a lot of bridge quests to get there. Uh, yeah. Price of principles. Hmm. Bang. It pleases me to see you well. Do excuse me for interrupting, Mang. My lady, the gentleman from Ashkana Exports has just left. Uh, I understand now why you didn't want to receive him. You did well, Tataru. Please inform the guards that we will not be receiving any further guests this evening. Thank you, my lady. Ever since we defeated Gaius von Balzar and de destroyed his ultimate weapon, the eyes of the world have followed our every move, scarce remembering to blink. Where once we worked in secret, with precious few friends and all too many enemies, we are now besieged by benefactors, each one more eager than the last to offer us his complete support. A true embarrassment of riches. Of course, every promise of patronage comes with a price. Some make their intentions known from the start, while others endeavor to engage us more subtly. Dress it how they will, the message is ever the same. We shall help you, but only if you help us. The gentleman Tataru spoke of was more brazen than most. In exchange for certain supplies, he would have us resolve a business dispute. Naturally, I refused him, as I have every other merchant of his ilk. Alas, the syndicate's overtures are not so easily rejected. When we formed the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, it was with the goal of serving Eorzea, not the interests of individual Eorzeans. Our neutrality is fundamental to our cause. In my heart, I know this to be true, and yet, and yet, if accepting these offers of patronage could empower us to do greater good, might they not warrant greater consideration? Our Baldessian colleagues have been generous beyond measure, but we cannot expect them to... Forgive me. I did not mean to burden you so. Yet, my urge to share this dilemma may not be wholly misguided. Might I impose upon you to consult the others? They are like to have their own opinions on this matter. Alright, she also has this. <sighs> um... Basically, I'm not really going to get into it, but this unlocks hard versions of each of the primal trials. So hard Ifrit, hard Garuda, hard Titan. Um, and then I think you also need to do this, I believe, to get the Bahamut trials. Um, I don't know if this is strictly necessary, and I mean, I'm not going to have this video series contain everything there is to do in Final Fantasy XIV. I really am focused on the main story. Now, I'll probably show you Bahamut, because that sounds pretty baller. But, like, the hard version of Ifrit and Titan and Garuda, I, I don't know. It's probably not going to be that different. So, I just wanted to make you aware that that is available to me, and I'm probably going to do it. But, not on camera.
Recall you our meeting with the Admiral shortly after the Lamentin sent word of the summoning of Titan. And mayhap you also recall my words to our host. I said under Murovib that her people had broken their treaty with the Kobolds and that the Beastmen had justly responded, that we had been called to intervene in a conflict which she herself had invited. I spoke, in short, the truth. And wherefore did I speak it? Because owing no allegiance to Limsa, I felt no compulsion to allow the Lamincents to distort the facts to fit a narrative which justified their actions and absolved them of guilt. Upon this subject, Minfilia can expect a similar reply. Our many dalliances with the city-states have already weakened our claim to neutrality, but the past she contemplates would see us relinquish entirely. Fortune begets power, and power fortune. That we, and especially you, have power is beyond doubt. The question is what to do with it. You may be interested to know that there is a growing belief amongst the refugees that Alamigo could be liberated, if only the Scions would commit their strength to the cause. Yet theirs is but one of many causes. We stand at a crossroads, Mang. Each path is paved with good intentions, but where they lead is far from clear. I've been receiving a lot of gifts lately, but Papalimo keeps making me send them back. It wouldn't be so bad, but some of them are really nice. I mean, very nearly abandon your principles nice, you know? None can deny that we would benefit from more support, but if it comes at the cost of our principles. Neutrality was ever a delicate matter. I've lost count of the times I've had to explain to people that our allegiances need not necessarily lie in the same place as our headquarters. Mind you, if we are to sell our services for Gil, we might as well declare our fealty to Ulda now and have done with it. I'm quite sure Ida would enjoy the bribes. Uh, yep, 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 that's about that. Okay, thank you. There's the lot of the powerful to attract the co covetous as well as the needy. Thus doth prudence dictate that those with power proffer aid with one hand, whilst the other resteth ever on their hilt. Alas, we have not the luxury of time to decipher our petitioner's machinations. Nay, not while the peace tribes do labor unseen, defiant in defeat, to raise up their fallen primals once more. Doubt not that they shall return, stronger and bolder both, nor that we shall be the ones to meet them. This sacred charge shall ever be ours. Tis but a pity we are so few, and our fortune so finite. Okay, blah blah blah. That lets us go. <sighs> if it bleeds, we can kill it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just get that all out of the way. Hmm. The situation is not wholly unexpected. I too have given much thought to our organization's future, though it would seem I have reached a different conclusion. Mayhap it is time I made my feelings known to the antecedent. Come along, man. Alphano, Man, is aught amiss? You desired counsel, and so you shall have it. Minfilia, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn must leave Ulda. We must do what? So long as we remain within Uldan territory, we will never be free to act with impunity. Moving our headquarters to Vesper Bay only delayed the inevitable. We have demonstrated our capabilities, and the Syndicate has taken note. They will not suffer our organization to remain independent now. We are far too dangerous for that. Surely you realize they are the reason Vesper Bay still lacks an etherite. They know full well how beneficial one would be for our, to our cause. Which is why it and other favors will be denied us unless we cooperate. If Ulda is no longer suitable, where would you have us go? Experience has taught us that appearance of neutrality is as important as the reality. Accordingly, we must keep each of the great nations at arm's length and plant our banner in a place where each all agree to be beyond their borders. Mordona. Revenants told, to be precise. 
It lies within neutral territory and offers all the essential facilities we require. By way of an additional benefit, it is also frequented by a veritable legion of adventurers who may serve to supplement our ranks. I am of course conscious of the fact that we have developed a certain bond with Ulda and her people over the years, but I truly believe this to be the best course of action. As you yourself observed, we have invaluable ties to the local community, forged through years of concerted effort. Ulta... Ulta is our home, Alphanode. To cast aside everything we have built and start anew in that desolate wasteland would be beyond reckless. The decision is yours to make, Antecedent. I ask only that you recall the shared purpose which first moved us to found the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, and which moved you to found the Path of the Twelve ere that. We aspire to an ideal, you and I, just as my grandfather did. That makes us more than mere comrades in arms. We are as much fam we are as much your family as That'll be all, Afanod. I'm sure you have some familial affairs of your own to attend to. Your concern is most generous, but no. I have left them in the hands of men better suited to the task than I. I could not very well allow my personal affairs to come before the needs of the Order, after all. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, um... They're all strength and garbage shit ass, I guess. I don't know. Forty eight hundred XP. What is this nonsense? Forty eight hundred XP. Leave Olda? Has it truly come to this? Hmm. Oh, Mang, pray attend to Elphinode. He is engaged in some business or other and requires your assistance. Pray be on your way. Elphinode waits upon you, and I have much to think about. Oh, and tell him he shall have my answer in due time. Oh, so... Titles. Yeah. Everybody's got to have a cool title under their name. So... Uh, we're... There it is. So I have two. I have Gambler and Heart of the Party. Uh, Heart of the Party you got from getting 10 commendations. I have 22. There's a bunch of rewards for commendations. All the way up to like 3,000 or something like that. Uh, there's a couple mounts in there and some minions and some cosmetics. So if I keep playing healers and stuff, I'm sure we'll we'll get up there. But I like Heart of the Party for now. Confound it. She knows what must be done and still she hesitates. All because of these fanciful rumors. Hmm. I should explain. Menphilia's mother well, adoptive mother, was among the great many who perished during the Calamity. Flamin, 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 Felhamin, Felhamin, we're going with that. Felhamin was her name, though you may know her better as the songstress of Ulda. She was a performer of singular talent and much beloved by the people of Eorzea, not to mention a certain Charlian minstrel. As you may imagine, the news of her passing was greeted with shock and disbelief by her adoring followers, many of whom refused to acknowledge what had happened. That her body was never found only served to encourage speculation. Minfilia, too, struggled at first to accept the truth, but as Falhamon's absence stretched from months into years, she saw that there could be no other explanation. Until recently, at any rate, for whatever reason, rumors have once again begun to circulate that Falhamon is alive and well. One of our informants, Father Iliad, has sent word that a woman matching the songstress's description has been seen of late at the seaside resort of Costa del Sol. If we could succeed in tracking her down, I have no doubt that any worries that now plague Minfilia's heart might be assuaged. I mean to set forth for Lanasi at once. Let us reconvene there and inquire with Master Gagaruju as to the veracity of these rumors.
Let's do it. I never mind visiting Costa del Sol. Look at those fireworks going on. Yep, those are fireworks. Uh, Gega, Gega Ruju. Uh, oh, sweet siren of the sands, my Makote muse, why have you forsaken me? Titan's Bane, I mean Mang, what brings you to my humble resort? Belhamon, you mean to tell me the goddess of made flesh who dwelt among us until so very recently was the songstress of Ulda? He gads, man. If I had known that, I would have chained her to my bedpost and never let her leave. Uh, oh, for shame. To think that she now plies her trade for the riffraff off to the west or wherever she said she was going. It's a tragedy, I say, a tragedy. West, is it? Thank you, Master Gejiruju. Your information will serve us well. That said, there are num any number of places she could be. I shall begin my search by the docks and see if any witnesses might have some knowledge to spare. I would be most appreciative if you could travel on to Wineport and do the same. You can't tell people you want to chain a woman to your bed and never let her leave. It's just, it's not good. It's not a good thing to say. Trust me. Know from experience. Well, if it isn't Mang, savior of Wineport, to what do we owe the pleasure? Ah, yes, we did receive a customer matching that description. She was a delight to behold, to give the woman her due, but her perfume was so ghastly I had no choice but to eject her from the premises, interfering with tastings, you understand. If she is your quarry, why not consult your blind associate? His olfactory perception is without peer. Given that I could smell the woman from a mom away, I dare say he could smell her from ten. I have a blind associate? Eh, yeah. you want to know if I've seen a Makote lass by the name of Felhamon? I wish. I haven't seen a lass of any description for far too bloody long. All right, dude. all right, dude. I see you have had many grand adventures since last we spoke, Mang. You must share them with me sometime. The girl from a little while ago, one does not forget a perfume like that. So robust and intoxicating, yet simultaneously familiar. Reminiscent of a bloom native to these parts, in fact. I said as much when we spoke. She complimented my powers of observation and asked me where she might find some of the flowers. So I told her to follow the road south into Raincatcher Gully and then head east after crossing the second bridge. The flowers which grow in the shade of the cliff have the strongest scent, you see. If you make haste, you may yet find her there. Well, dude, nobody... Nobody makes haste like I make haste. With this flying behemoth... Can fly over everything... Look at that shit. You don't care about it. You just fly over it all. Great. Oh, shit. Uh, what the fuck am I doing? Here we go. Forgot how to play. Okay, do that. Do uh, Inferno. There you go. Easy. I am in your debt, stranger. I did not realize my activities had aroused the Gubu's ire until it was too late. Their oils can be used to make a perfume, you see, and I... A daughter and shit. Well, Hammond, I'm... I don't... Who are you? 
Whom do you serve? Whom do I serve? Jesus? It appears you've already found our woman. Consider me impressed, my friend. The songstress of Ulda, I presume? Menphilia, or should I say Asilia, is looking for you. Asilia? You are the very picture of health, my lady, if the world thinks you dead. I can only conclude that this was by design. The question is, why? Not everyone who endeavors to find me does so with the best intentions, child. You will be pleased to know that I fully intend to reveal myself to Menphilia when the time is right. Oh, well, that does please me, more than you know. But tell me, sojourns in the forests of Lanasi aside, when exactly will the time be right? When I deem it so, do you imagine I traveled all this way on a whim? As I was telling your associate prior to your intrusion, I came here to harvest these flowers for use in a perfume. Does that satisfy your curiosity, or would you interrogate me further? My apologies for the interruption. Anyway, now that we all have that which we came for, might we continue this conversation in a safer locale? Wineport, say? Still faster to teleport, though. What master do you serve? This, this is not at all how I had envisioned it. I can scarce begin to imagine what emotions will go through Menphilia's heart when she reunites with her mother after all these years. Yeah, well, just give me this, uh, ring. All things in time. You say my daughter awaits us in Vesper Bay, yes? I have kept her waiting long enough. Let us be off on the next ferry. I can finish fashioning the perfume along the way. Understood. Come with me. It would be my pleasure to escort you to the Waking Sands. Uh, but not me, not Mang Mang. He's a piece of shit. Oh no, I did get escorted. Oh my god. See, that makes it so funny that they, they can do this and they know it's a good thing to do. But they never did it. Although, keep in mind now, these quests were released after the initial release of the game. So we're starting to get into big brain territory of MMO development now. They've, they've learned some lessons. We might see a lot more teleportation. Antecedent, you have a guest. Zahman? Cilia. I haven't seen her like this in years, man. What, hugging somebody? I... I never truly believed it when they told me you were dead. But what kept you away for so long? The Imperials came for me, as I always knew they would. And so I resolved to stay as far away from you as I could, lest their pursuit of me endanger you and your cause. Our cause. I could think of no better way to grant you the freedom to continue our work. Continue it you did, achieving things I would not have imagined possible. I followed your every success and celebrated in secret. I'm so proud of you, Asilia. I learned from the best. I have a gift for you. Salsetia perfume, you remembered. 
How could I ever forget? You wore it all the time. If ever I lost sight of you, I could find you again just by following my nose. I did not think it was made anymore. You must have gone to so much trouble. It was no trouble to me, my darling. I fear I cannot say the same for Mang, however. I could not have made it without him. Yep, that's me. Thank you, Mang. Thank you both. There's something else. This, this is the cat's eye I found. All these years you kept it. My father was a member of the Alamegan Resistance. When I was yet a child, he brought me here to Ulda. The accident which claimed his life happened shortly after our arrival. It was Laman who took care of me then. She raised me as her own, taught me everything I needed to know to survive. Hmm. I am no stranger to the facts of your history, yet I fear I have failed to grasp their implications. It is clear that there is much I do not know about you and your mother both. One of our first lessons to me one of her first lessons to me concerned mining, and I was a very dedicated student. This cat's eye was the first stone I unearthed. It wasn't much, of course, but I was exceedingly proud to have found it nonetheless. So I gave it to Laman as a gift. She said it was beautiful. But there I'm at a loss. Why are you returning this to me? Is something amiss? No, Asilia, nothing is amiss. Quite the opposite. I need you to realize how far you've come, and how much further you may still, must still go. You and your allies have accomplished more than I could ever have hoped. You have succeeded where I failed, and made me so proud that that words fail me. But even as I marvel at the woman you've become, and at all the many things you've done, I cannot help but think of that which you have yet to do, and of what it may entail. Asilia, daughter, you cannot stay here anymore. You and the Scions must leave Ulda. Amen. You built it once, Asilia. You can build it again. And this time we'll do it together. Truly? Alpha Note. The time has come for the Scions to leave Vesper Bay. We shall establish a new headquarters in Revenant's Toll, as you proposed. Much work lies ahead of us. Inform our fellow Scions and send word to the students of Baldessian. Preparations begin at once. Alrighty. Doesn't matter too much. It is all well and good that we have found ourselves a new home in Revenant's Toll, but there is so much to be done, and in so little time. Our first step will be to secure the cooperation of the Adventurers Guild representatives there. Were it not for the guild's considerable efforts, the original Camp Revenant's Toll would never have been established, much less its more heavily fortified successor. However, with construction still ongoing and resources in short supply, it seems certain that the guild will require something in return for their support, sympathetic to our cause though they may be. Whatever they ask, I shall not begrudge it. To be plain, we need them more than they need us. Without their assistance, such essential tasks as securing new facilities, cultivating relationships with local merchants, and recruiting adventurers would prove difficult, if not impossible. You need not concern yourself with such matters antecedent. Really, Alphanode, if I need concern myself with anything, it is surely matters such as these. 
Indirectly, perhaps. I submit that you might instead concern yourself with a different matter, namely, to whom the resolution of such matters might best be entrusted, and here I am. Nor do I come alone. May I present the esteemed emissary of the Adventurer's Guild at Revenant's Toll. It is an honor, Antecedent. Upon receiving word of your intentions from Master Alpha Node, we thought it best to begin talks at the earliest available opportunity. Know that my associates at Revenant's Toll hold the signs of the Seventh Dawn in the highest regard. We should be honored to welcome your organization. There are, of course, certain provisions which must needs be negotiated. If it please you, I would do so. It does. Sir, unless I am much mistaken, you are the one known as Mang, are you not? May I say what a pleasure it is to make your acquaintance. Slathborn spoke of you in the most glowing terms. To steal an Imperial Reaper and then use it to infiltrate a Garlean Castrum is an undertaking few would contemplate, and fewer still survive. You shall always be welcome at Revenant's Toll. We hope you will favor us with your presence again ere long. Well, well. It would seem your reputation precedes you, Mang. Mayhap I should... Mayhap I should dispatch you to Revenant's Toll with all haste, as first intended. But before that, I dare say you've earned yourself a rest. After all, you've traveled so far, and there's already so much you've done for us, and for me. We will speak again anon. Till then, take care. Ah, Mang, were you able to get some rest? I would ask you to come with me to the Solar. Alphanode has just returned, and it would seem there is something he would share with us. That's all I do. I just nod and do what they say. You're here. Good. I come bearing news. The negotiations are concluded. And? Our friends at the Adventurers Guild have agreed to furnish us with new facilities and material support in exchange for our assistance in the ongoing defense and development of Revenant's Toll. Scions of the Seventh Dawn shall have a new home in Mordona, the Rising Stones. Yeah, hey, yeah. Bittersweet victory, if truth be told. I cannot deny that I had come to look forward to Tatru's tales of our many guests and their many, many demands. The waking sands to the rising stones. Passably poetic. That wasn't your doing, was it? I too have news to share. In expectation of this momentous day, I've personally informed the Alliance leaders of our plans, and they have each pledged their full support, General Raubon included. Moreover, I've decided that the time is right for us to cast off the vestiges of our Order's veil of secrecy and announce ourselves to the world. Are you sure that is wise, Antecedent? If anything, it is a mere formality. Our existence is quite possibly the worst kept secret in Eorzea. Let us affirm our identity. Proclaim our achievements, that all may know what the Scions of the Seventh Dawn stand for. Well, obvious risks apart, it would be nice to receive a little more recognition. And that people have a right to know who saved them. It is my hope that this gesture will encourage the people of Eorzea to place their trust in us. I would reveal to them the true extent of our power, yes, but in so doing... I would show them that it is a power accountable to no one, and at once to all. And what of us? We who have felled primals and faced down the Empire. To you, my fellow Scions, I would say this. Prepare for the challenges which lie ahead, for they will be great indeed.
Great. I say yet no greater than us, and we will rise to them, as we have time and again, united as one. Hmm, there must be some way I can... Wait, that area is said to be rich in minerals. Maybe I should ask Fal Falhaman to teach me the basics of mining, too. Uh-oh, Tatru, what are you doing? You ever wonder how he does it? Alpha know what I mean. It was almost predictable that he should appear with an emissary of the Adventurers Guild mere moments after I had expressed the need to forge ties between our organizations. Truly, his sense of timing rivals even your own. Setting such mysteries aside for the present, I have a task for you. I would like you to deliver these documents to Slathborn. They concern our forthcoming move. Do take care on the road and represent us well, man. Let's do it. I was told to expect a scion, but I didn't expect it to be you. It has been far too long, Mang. You have something for me, yes? This shit. Let's see now. Yes, everything appears to be in order. You'll be staying with us for a while, yes? Would that we had a dozen more like you. Since we don't, though, we'll just give you the work of a dozen men. <laughs> I jest, I jest. Yeah, fuck you, dude. Just give me this uh, choker. Possibly a prime. I like to do the work of a dozen men, I see. Ha! Huh, but I jest. Even I can appreciate that an important man such as yourself has little time for menial tasks. Since you're here, mayhap you'd be keen on having a look around the Scion's new home. See that impressive structure over there? That's the place. It was originally built to house a branch of the guild, you see. As such, it comes complete with a tavern, where adventurers can rest from the road, fill their bellies with good food and drink, and their ears with tales of fortunes to be had about the realm. It may get a bit raucous at times, but I imagine it'll be as good a place as any to recruit capable men and women to your cause. Come with me, I'll show you around. Is that you, Meng? I'm quite sorry to interrupt, but I have most urgent news. We received grim tidings from Gridania, and it would appear our aid is required at once. I must ask you to report back to the Waking Sands with all due haste. Everything quite all right, friend. Can't say I'm privy to the details, but it would appear this is no time for a leisurely tour. No worries. You can rest assured that I'll see to all necessary arrangements. Pray return any time after you've seen to your more pressing matters. Alrighty. Back to the Waking Sands. Like so. A lot of those uh, blue quests to do in here. A messenger from the Twin Adder came to the Waking Sands while you were in Mordona. I wasn't privy to his conversation with the antecedent, but I did see the look on her face after he took his leave. Something is definitely amiss. Could it be that the Ixil have summoned Garuda again? Or mayhap Imperial forces have been sighted within the Shroud? Well, whatever it may be, I'm absolutely certain it's nothing you can't handle. Go and ask the antecedent if there's anything you can do. Well, quit jabber jawing to me and I'll go to it. I 
I knew this day would come, yet I prayed it would not come so soon. We have reason to believe that another primal, or an entity resembling one, has been summoned in Gridania. Thine arrival is customarily timely, Mang. The etheric waves leave little room for doubt. Thy talents will be needed ere long. If there be truth in my suspicions, tis a familiar foe we face, though one quite unlike the Lady of the Vortex. We dare not draw conclusions without evidence, but as Uranje says, the readings bear a strong resemblance to ones observed more than five years ago. Uh, though I had hoped the Mogul's guard beyond such follies. Suffice it to say, this disturbance warrants a full investigation. Thy presence hath been requested by Commander Hulua. He awaiteth thee in the theater's nest. Pray hasten to Gridania, Mang. Ida and Papalimo will rendezvous with you there. May you walk in the light of the crystal. Yes, hail the crystal. New primal, huh? Mm, I don't even know what it is. The Moggle's Guard. Pleasure to see you as always, Mang. Thank you for answering my summons. Quite frankly, I could think of no one more qualified to... Ah, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Allow me to explain. Sure. Oh, and I get a Buffalo Calf minion. And a level 70 weapon. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good. Let's crack that baby open. And uh, a Sahagan card. All right, cool. Buffalo cat. All right, cool. Cantamina Thavnaria. Of course. Uh, hail to the King Kupo. Ooh, Kupo! Mogul's guard! Not long ago, the Mughal Kuplo Kop visited the Adder's Nest to request an audience with the Elder Seedseer. He spoke of an imminent threat to all Mughal kind, one which would imperil the entire Twelves would if left unchecked. You proved an able ambassador to the Sylphs, and we would have you reprise the role in our dealing with the Mughals. The rest you should hear from Kuplo Kop himself. He awaits you with the Elder Seats here at the Lotus Stand. Kuplo Kop! Uh, okay, with Lotus, okay, yes. Conjurer's Guild. The other science have already arrived, sir. May I show you in? Yes. Yes, please do. Let me meet the Moogle. The Moogle! Game's been sorely lacking in Moogles. There it is. Please, you have to stop them. But, but you mustn't kill them. They're not bad Moogles, Kupo. They're just misguided. A gentle, no, firm thrashing is in order, yes, but no. Calm yourself, Kuplo Cop. Can you not see that he hasn't the faintest idea what you're talking about? Be quiet this instant. Pray forgive his witless outburst, sister. Most grateful am I that you have come, Mang, and upon such short notice. Truly, Gridania could not wish for a more stalwart ally. But you are doubtless eager to know wherefore we summoned you. Our friend Kuplo Cop has brought us to us news of a most unsettling development. It would seem that good King Mughal Moog the Twelfth has returned to Eorzea, or Mogul Moog. Or did we find out it was Mog? Mogul Mog? I guess that might make more sense. A curious thing to hear, I know. 
truth to tell, I myself cannot say for sure if he is a genuine figure from history or some manifestation of Mughal mythology. Kuplo here would have me believe the former. Once upon a time, we Mughals served the gods in the heavens. It was quite nice up there, unspeakably beautiful, unimaginably spacious, and with a literally endless supply of wine, Kupo. In spite of this, or possibly because of the last part, the gods eventually became discontented and started squabbling, which made life jolly difficult for the poor Mughals. So good King Magomag XII, may his glorious name live forever, decreed that the time had come to leave Kupo. The realm of man would suffice, he said, so all the Mughals should live there instead. Unfortunately, the two realms are so far apart that we couldn't safely fly down. But good King Mago Mag the Twelfth, may his miraculous foresight ever be praised, knew exactly what to do, Kupo. He had a rope, you see, the longest one ever woven. This he nobly held while his subjects climbed all the way down to the world below. That is how we Mughals came to this land, Kupo. All of us except good King Mughal Mogamog the Twelfth, may his courageous sacrifice never be forgotten. He alone would remain in the heavens so that Mughal kind might at last know peace. Except that he has not remained in the heavens from what I understand. That being your reason for contacting us, yes? I'll bet he tied the rope to something. Good thinking. Remind me again what the problem was with him returning to Eorzea. Problem, Ida, lies in the fact that he was summoned. It is our belief that good King Magomag the Twelfth is a myth made manifest via means akin to those employed by the beast tribes in the summoning of their gods. Wait, you're saying a handful of Mughals with a boatload of crystals wished really, really hard and he just sort of appeared? Would that even work? What I cannot fathom is why they would even try. With Garuda humbled and the Ultima weapon destroyed, what new threat could have prompted them to take so drastic a measure? Might that not in itself be the answer? Twice in the last half decade, Eorzea has been brought onto the very brink of destruction, only to be spared at the last by the heroics of a chosen few. To you who braved those tempests and survived by virtue of your own strength, this latest period of peace will doubtless seem a welcome respite. But to those who had not the power to defend themselves, who were spared only by another's grace, this is merely the calm before the storm. I think the Mogul's guard are afraid, afraid of what tomorrow will bring, and that, and that things may not end so well as they did yesterday. That fear has driven them to call upon a greater power, one they believe can be relied upon to protect their loved ones and their homes, come what may. I assure you, the Mogul's guard only want to protect the forest from outsiders, but ever since the return of good King Magomag the Twelfth, May his boundless grace fill our hearts with love. They've started to get a little carried away, Kupo. Virgin on a lot, in fact. Like the sylphs who summoned Ramu, you mean? Hmm, we cannot discount the possibility that this entity is influencing the Mogul Mughals in a manner similar to that of a primal. We share the same concern. Whoever or whatever the king may be, it is our belief that he poses a threat not only to Mughal kind, but to Gordani as a whole. Thus do we beseech you, Mang, confront good King Magomag the Twelfth and drive him from our midst. Humbly I do thank you. The sanctuary of the Mogul's Guard and their liege lord is concealed by magical wards. Brother E. Sumiyan of the Conjurer's Guild will doubtless be able to offer insight on how they might be dispelled. Pray seek his counsel ere you proceed any further. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Bounce out of here. We're going to kill a giant Moogle? Is that what we're doing? I mean, if I must, I must. Welcome, Mang. Welcome. 
that you should be the one to face good King Mogomog the Twelfth is of great comfort to me and to the Elementals both. As I am sure you know, the Mughals are not by their nature a warlike race. Yet should the king be suffered to remain, it is like that his influence will bring about a change in them. Thus does it behoove us to defeat him quickly, before any lasting damage is done. Make whatever preparations you deem necessary, and inform me when you are ready to seek the king. Oh, I'm ready to seek the king, baby. Alright, we're up to 76 item level. The wards bearing access to the king's sanctuary can only be nullified through the use of enchanted keystones, the selfsame method employed five years ago when first the king was summoned to Eorzea. It was with great regret that we were forced to sanction the slain of the guardians who then held the keystones, for none were in our possession at the time. By the grace of the elementals, however, we have been spared that burden on this occasion. Kuplokop confided in me that he had been entrusted with a set of keystones by the Mogul's guard themselves. Yet wishing not to betray their confidence, he begged me to find some other means to gain entry to the king's sanctum. Alas, I have been una unable to do so, and dare not labor any longer, for fear that the Mughals may might succumb to the corrupting influence of their liege lord. We must needs have Kublo Kop's keystones, Mang. Pray go to him and beg his assistance. He awaits you at West Shore Pier. Impress upon him our great need, and I am certain he will yield. Uh, okay, the Lancer Guild. It is a pretty slick looking robe. I'll give you that. Kuplokop! So, how will you do it, Kupo? Oh, he told you about that. Well, if there truly is no other way, I'll do it, Kupo. Take the ferry to Sweet Bloom Pier. I'll go on ahead. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, big ass moogles. Don't you dare lie to me, Kupo. I know what you're planning. I won't allow it. Open your eyes, Kupo. The king will never be satisfied no matter how many crystals you bring him. My book. Mm -hmm. We offered you a choice, and this is how you repay us? By consorting with this Lalafell? Imperials, Gridanians, Sylphs, you're no different from the rest of them. Actually, you're worse, Kupo. Traitor to his kin's Mughals. He plots treason against the crown. Enough. Kuplo Kap will answer for his crime soon enough, as will all who defy the will of good King Mogamog the Twelfth. May he reign forevermore, Kupo. King is planning to purge the Twelvesword of his enemies, Kupo. We've got to stop him before it's too late. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm here for. Entrance to Thorn March is deep within the Bramble Patch, Kupo. If you take me there, I can nullify the ward. But be warned, the Magos Guard has set traps to lure enchanted beasts. I can't hide from them, so you'll need to protect me, Kupo. Uh oh shit. It's an actual escort quest. God damn. <sighs> uh, yeah, I would have preferred to just fly over everything, but I don't think that's going to be an option. Escorting a Moogle to go kill a Moogle king. Pretty wild. Pretty wild stuff.
Yeah, I would say probably a big part of the enjoyment of this game is just like it being a Final Fantasy MMO, you know? And there have just been so many Final Fantasy references and connections and, um, you know, it's for Final Fantasy fans in a way. I'm sure you can enjoy it, you know, just fine without having played all the Final Fantasy games or anything, but for the people that have played every game, it's it's pretty cool. And that's not even counting like all the crazy stuff that they have added in the expansion. Cause I know there's like a whole raid connected to Final Fantasy Tactics, and I can't fucking wait for that. I'm sure I will do that on camera, because that's going to be awesome. Alright, these things aren't too bad. Shit, bad breath. Oh, damn it. My cast time is excruciating. Stop it. We're here, Koopo. I don't see any more beasts, do you? Are you ready to face the king, Koopo? And step closer to the ward. Raise your hands and focus. Like when you attune to an etherite, Koopo. I'll open the way for you. Oh. Rest is up to you, Koopo. Now go and teach those foolish Moogles a lesson and send the king back once he came. Alrighty. Okay. So, Thorn March is the name of the trial. And uh, there's only a hard, there's no normal difficulty. It starts with hard. Uh, with an item level required of 54. So, we're above that. Uh, let's see here. Okay, there's a bunch of Moogle ads, I guess. Uh, we don't really need to know about that, I assume. Basically, heal people. That's probably good. Stay away from everything and heal stuff. Um, the ads all have, like, different jobs like normal character jobs paladin and white mage and stuff so there's like a preferred kill order i guess but i don't really need to know that and then that's basically it the whole fight is a damage check 
So I assume at this point this is going to be pretty easy. There's no crazy mechanics I need to know. So let's uh, swap on over to the Scalaire. Uh, yep, that, good, okay. And like so. Yep, that's how the Scholar looks, I remember now. Uh, with an item level of 84. Okay, very nice. Thorn March as a healer. Do it, do it. Uh-oh, wait time. No! That's not what I want to hear. I don't want to know about no wait time. Uh, all right, I guess I will pause. All right, took about a minute and a half. Not too bad. Click that button, you fool! You fool! Oh my god. Oh my. Find another one. There are a dime a dozen. Find another one. What the? Okay. This is a, this is an eight man, of course. Full party. Uh, so yeah, we're actually going to be killing Moogles, which I think is a first. Is there any other Final Fantasy game where you actually kill Moogles? Meddling Adventurers. Ben the King. But they're so cute, why do we have to kill them? At least I don't have to kill them. I can just heal. Alright, we got a few sprouts in here. A few newbies. You want at least one so you get the bonus reward. Let's do it! Oh shit. Uh, so far, seems pretty simple. Uh, there might be some AoE healing involved. Just keep a watch on those those numbers. Keep a watch on those bars. I will heal you so I can do something. Oh my god. And the corpse of the Moogle just stays there. That's weird. Oh shit, all right, now it's getting complicated. Now ah, there's a bunch of them. Now things are getting hectic. Oh man. Come on, I was so far out of that, it's nonsense. Here, I'll cast Sucker. Boom, look at my big heels. Ever dance with a Moogle in the pale moonlight? Um. Okay, yeah, there's, uh. There's not a whole lot for me to do. No one is taking any damage. Alright. Phase two. Hail to the king. 
Hail to the king, baby. Oh my god, there he is. Shall suffer you from transgressions against my subject. I didn't do anything, man. Oh, I'll AoE heal. That'll save us. On this music. Shit. What is this music? Okay, I'm actually healing now. Things are all over the place. Uh, let's put that on. Get the fuck out of that. Keep an eye on stuff. Keep an eye on stuff. Oh, God. All right. It's getting a little hectic here, man. Oh, my God. I died. A lot of us died. Shit. Can you can you swift cast a ray? Oh, I guess I don't have enough MP. Oh shit! You can swift cast a rays, but I should be healing. Okay. Fuck. Hold on. I need. Oh god. Get the fuck out of that. This sort of went downhill, man. This went downhill, man. Oh, shit. I don't have Selene out. Tanks are dead. Oh, fuck. Fuck. That's all right. I guess I'll just die. <sighs> there was some attack that just fucking decimated our shit. Oh, okay. Because they didn't kill enough. They didn't kill enough of the Moogles. That's why. That big attack he does is based on how many Moogles are still alive. I think it was it was not my fault. That's all that really mattered. Okay, I guess I could see I was still in that one. This, this phase is all good. There's nothing complicated about this phase. But that music, you know, music fucks me up. I don't know what's going on with it. It sounds familiar.
Is it like something from Nightmare Before Christmas? Dude, why am I getting my shit pushed, Dad? Tanks have to pick that shit up, man. I'm just a little mang. I'm just a little mang. Oh, God. I'm still getting picked on. Fuck. Why am I drawing that much aggro? Why do I feel like we're gonna wipe again? Okay, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Look at that. Eight, eight man whispering dawn. I like that. That's how you get those numbers up. Big heels, but I think I think we got it. I think we got this one. There we go. You gotta tell the newbies what to do. Not everyone looks it up like I do. Monstrous Mogsor. Sounds badass. Mog sword. It's Mog. I, I hate it. I hate it. Alright, let's commend a tank. It's a Dark Knight sword. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, I can't wait to try out Dark Knight. It sounds badass. All right, we did it. I got two commendations. Yeah, the road to 3,000. I should get more, but I guess. There's two healers, two tanks. If I get two of the commendations, it's pretty good. You did it, Koopo. You did it. Good King Magomag the 12th. May his mighty soul rest in peace is no more. I shudder to think what might have happened had you not stopped the Mogglesgar when you did. Thank you, Mang. Perhaps now they'll come to their senses and stop playing at fairy tales. Rest assured that the chieftain will have choice words for them, too. You should go and tell Pukniepak that the king is no more, Kupo. She's with Ryo at Camp Tranquil, and she can relay the news to the chieftain. That was a, that was a pretty cool fight. I like the unique music going on in the background. And, uh, it's pretty hectic. I had to do some healing, but it was fun. Let's hand it in and we can finish off this video. I doing walking walking like a chump 
who I dare believe my ears? Good King Magama the Twelfth, may his magnificent virtue serve as an example to us all, has fallen? All Mughal kind owes you a debt, Kupo. Ah, and I sense Ryo wishes to congratulate you as well. I shall let you two speak without fear of interruption. Ah, hear about the cursed pile of rocks to call us. Oh, no, okay, that's something else. Uh, there's like an ass, metric ass ton of dungeons that I have to do. Uh, like all the hard versions of previous dungeons and stuff. Uh, it's crazy. It's just crazy amount of content. So plenty of stuff for me to do on my own time. All right, so that'll continue the main quest. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a good number of quests now, like a dozen, before we do another trial. Uh, and then there's, like, eight more quests, and then another trial, and then, like, a dozen more quests, and then a dungeon, and then a few more quests, and then a trial, and so on and so forth. So, plenty of fun stuff on the way. Stay tuned. My name is Mang. Game watching has been Final Fantasy XIV. See you fine folks in the next part.